Welcome to this video on how to set up Evernote. In the first video in this series we looked at adding all sorts of applications to the Chrome browser. They were all of the programming web design type except one, Evernote. Evernote is a bit of an enigma but it's really useful. In this video I hope to prove that to you. My name's Andy Wicks and I'm going to show you how to set up your Evernote account. But before I do, there are, there's something you need to know. Evernote doesn't just run in Chrome. Evernote will run on your PC, on your Apple Mac, on your smartphone even. You can add the Evernote application to all sorts of pieces of hardware. And that means that the notes that you create using Evernote are available wherever you have this hardware. So if you're sitting on top of a bus, all those Evernotes are available to you. If you're sitting on a beach with your laptop, the Evernotes are available to you. The ones we added were the applications in Chrome and the Web Clipper. And I'm going to show you each of those in action. But in the meantime, just know that we need to set up an account first. The first thing we have to do is to create an account. So click on the create an account link and it asks you for an email address. You fill in your email address and you decide on a username. Having got the username and password you then feed in the capture in the box below to make sure you're not a robot. Click on register and you're ready to go. I've already done this process so I'll meet you on the far side of that. So having entered the confirmation code from your email you now come to this screen. Here is where all your work gets done. There's a getting started Evernote and that's useful to read. Do have a read. But I'd like to show you how to get round things. We're going to have a look at some HTML, PHP, JavaScript and so on. And what we need is somewhere to put those bits of stuff that's interesting. So if you click on the little arrow at the side of notebooks, it says New Notebook. Click on the New Notebook and it asks you for a name. So I'm going to have a notebook called HTML and we're going to save that. I now have a notebook called HTML. Now I'm going to log in to my free hosting account using Kodi. So I've logged back in. I click on the text, always the text with Kodi, and here I am in the website. I'll open public HTML by clicking on it, and now I'm going to open index.html by clicking on it. Now there are several ways to get useful bits of code into Evernote. One is the obvious copy and paste. So I'm going to highlight this, press Ctrl and C to copy, go to my Evernote web page. Here I'm going to click on HTML and add new note. And I'm going to paste in Ctrl and V the code that I took from my web page. That's so that I've got the basic outline of a web page the next time I want to create one. I'm going to call this basic web page and I'm going to tell it that I'm done. That now adds this note to my Evernote account. The next time I want to create a web page I come here open that note, copy, paste, and I've got the outline. I don't have to type in that code again. Each time you create a new trick, a new little thing, if you put it in an appropriate folder, you can reuse it time and again for all the other bits that you create. So for example, there's a new uh, HTML technique that you learn, how to embolden something how to create a style sheet, 
and so on. You can pop these into Evernote and it's done. And the next time you want to embolden something or create a new style sheet, you just come to your Evernote account and there it is. Copy, paste and amend. And that saves an awful lot of programming time. And because Evernote is available on all these platforms, Evernote is really useful. I keep all my little bits of code in my Evernote account and I use it a lot. Having got our web page to work, let me show you one other little trick. The font size on that web page is rather small. Wouldn't it be nice to have something that's a bit bigger? Well, I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks. First of all, I'm going to open up a new tab in Chrome and in the search bar, address bar, I'm going to type in the name of the language that I'm trying to find something for, so in this case HTML, and I want to set the font size. A good trick if you're looking for techniques is to type in the name of the language and what it is you're trying to do. So I'm going to press enter and up come a whole list of websites that have the sort of thing that I might want. The first one is from W3 Schools and I happen to know that W3 Schools is an excellent source for all web programming stuff. W3 are the people who created the internet, who set HTML and so on, and their materials are really good. So HTML font size attribute takes me to the web page and look here is a piece of code that I'd actually like to use. So what I'm going to do is to highlight this code and now I'm going to go up to the Evernote little icon in the toolbar and click that. That opens up Web Clipper it asks me which notebook I want to put it in and since we've only got the one notebook at the moment it's come up with HTML. Now I can put in tags here. Tags are another way of finding things in Evernote. And I'm going to put in font size. Get rid of the box that tells me what to do. And I'll save selection. And what that does is it copies it into our Evernote account directly. I'll just close that and now go back to Evernote. I've got to refresh this so that it can find it. Right, it now says that I have two notes and the second one here which is at the top is font size. Okay that looks good. Now what I really want is font size. Ah right so I'll copy and paste this Control C, go to Kodi, just pop that in there, Control V. I also need the closing tag because as you'll remember if we take a toy out in HTML we've got to put that toy away and the slash in front of the command name means put the toy away. Something I think I may have forgotten to tell you is that in HTML these aren't called commands, they're called tags. OK, so I've put in font size 6 and saved this file. Now I don't know what the font sizes are at the moment, so I'll just try it out. I'll save this, go to first try, reload it, and ah, the font size is much bigger. And now you can have a little play with the font sizes if you want to. But should you ever need font size again, it's in your Evernote account and you'll be able to find it. I hope you find that useful because it works for all sorts of situations. If you find something on a web page that you like, you just highlight it and hit the web clipper icon. Or, if you just hit the web clipper icon, it saves the whole page for you. And the good bit, it even saves the URL. So when you have to quote things in your coursework, you've got the URL there, 
there's no question of plagiarism. 